measures to stop the spread of foot and mouth disease. There is a significant foot and mouth disease outbreak in Bali and throughout Indonesia. Animals having cloven feet, such as cows, buffalo, goats, sheep, pigs, camels, deer, and alpacas, were infected by the virus. Up until this point, Bali's farms have generally been able to suppress the epidemic. Currently, biosecurity precautions are being stepped up at Bali Safari Park and other animal facilities on the island. Bali Safari Park is a popular tourist destination in Bali. The facility is managed by Taman Safari Indonesia TSI, the parent corporation of zoos and safari parks throughout Indonesia. Reporters were informed by TSI Group's chief operating officer that the business is treating the problem seriously. Adrian Cecil informed the media, We have temporarily suspended feeding so that disease transmission from people to animals may be minimized, especially in the hot spots in East Java. At risk animal feeding and public interaction have been prohibited at Bali Safari Park as well. In an interview with neighborhood media, Bali Safari Park's general manager, Marcel Driesen, discussed the facility's efforts to lower the danger of foot and mouth disease for its animals as well as the potential of visitors creating bio-bridges for the illness to spread. Additionally, steps are being taken to lessen the possibility that visitors may spread the illness. In the correct circumstances, the virus, also known as Banyakat Kaki Dan Malat, PMK, in Indonesia, may persist for up to six months on shoes, clothing, and dirt. In addition to endangering the animals in the safari park, tourists also put livestock and the landscapes where livestock grazes at risk. As a safari park, the establishment is home to rare buffalo, cow, goat, and deer species from throughout the globe. To assist lower the possibility of the disease spreading, Dreesen and his colleagues have implemented strict disinfection procedures for both visitors and cars. All automobiles, scooters, and other mobility aids, he continued, went through the disinfection pool. Vehicles transporting supplies to the safari park are included in this. Before being permitted to access the supplier's warehouse at the park, all trucks and vans must be sprayed with disinfection, the driver must go through shoe cleaning, and drivers will get a briefing on protocol. Additionally, the staff has received a briefing and other details regarding foot and mouth disease that they may share with their families. Though it is believed that the agricultural community in Bali is becoming more conscious of foot and mouth disease, other locals may not be as knowledgeable about PMK and should be educated to help farmers and rural communities. Approximately three weeks ago, Dreesen stated that we also socialized all employees about the dangers of FMD contamination, of which our employees, mostly from local residents, to be careful not only in animal parks but also at home and are also expected to help inform their families and the community, about the dangers of FMD. The water management system for the animals at Bali Safari Park has also undergone modifications. Typically, the Subak waterway is the source of the water that the animals have access to in their cages. There are worries that the watercourse is now poisoned as a result of instances in animals upstream. In order to prevent animals from reconsuming the water, which is thought to be poisoned, he stated, we have a Subak water channel that comes from outside to enter the animal park. The sanitary mats that have been laid all across Bali Safari Park are the most obvious change for guests. The sanitizing mats for shoes are a significant factor in the process of risk reduction. Additionally, these types of mats have been put in place in airports all around Australia and New Zealand to lessen the possibility that travelers returning after a vacation in Bali may bring foot and mouth disease into those nations.